we're going to use some data from some sales figures to do database work in Microsoft Excel. What you see on the screen in front of you is a report from perhaps the company's database on sales for a store. You can see that there's a lot of columns and a lot of rows, so you don't have to type all these things in. I'll provide you with a spreadsheet so that you can just manipulate what's already there. So you can see each title is at the top in row number one. There's a few blanks that we're going to use formulas for. And then let's scroll to the bottom and you will see that it has, I think it's 172 rows. It's a sales transaction. So all the way to December here, you can see the sales of each item in our pool supply store and a little bit of data about each one. The store cost in column E is how much the item cost wholesale. The sale price is what we sold it for. And then we need to calculate a few items such as the profit, the commission, and then we'll do some reports on each salesperson to find out who the best salesperson is in our store. Well, let's do some of the formulas here that we will have to uh, encounter when we work with sales data. Over here in column L, I've put some notes on the formulas that we're going to use and some of the techniques that you'll see in this lesson. Text to columns, which we'll use to split these names. You can see that there's a first and last name in column I. We want to split them into separate columns. The second function is the if formula. You've seen that before. The next function is called the sum if, which means you can pick certain areas or certain items to add together based on a criteria that you choose. This is a database, really more than a spreadsheet. And in databases, we do a lot of sorting and filtering. A new concept that you'll see is a pivot table, which will give you a, a summary of like the number of sales that each employee makes. And then finally, we'll review charting by making a pie chart. Let's start by making the titles up here in row one more readable. Right now, they're all compacted together. So let's highlight these. And let's go to text wrapping. Text wrapping allows us to see each one of these in its full text. So now you can see in column B, C, and H that there's more text that we didn't see before. Let's start with the item called text to columns. What we would like to do is to split these columns so that they have a first name in one column and a last name in the other. So to do that, we're going to need to insert a new column to give it some space. So right click on column header J and choose insert. And so now we have a blank column to work with. Let's go to column I and we're going to the data tab here and then choosing text to columns. What this will do, it will allow the computer to parse the data that's in column I. There's two options. If you used fixed width, that means the first column might have five characters or seven or whatever you want to choose. But in our case, we want to split it based on the space that's between these names. So I'm going to choose delimited. When you select delimited, it says, what are your delimiters? A delimiter is a divider. And so if you select any of these items here, a tab, a semicolon, a comma, or a space, it will automatically divide the words on what you choose above. So I'm choosing space. And so a space character between the words gives us two columns. Now let's change these headers now since they make more sense to say first name and then last name for each of the salespeople. And so we've added a column. Now the next item is to calculate how much profit was sold for each of these items. For instance, Transaction 1001 was a pool cover. The product code is something in our inventory that we just uh, use as based on the maybe the manufacturer's code. But how much profit do you make? If you sell the item for $98 and it costs you $58 to buy it from your supplier, it's a simple formula to say equals this square here, which is F2, subtract E2, and press Enter and you can see that we made forty dollars and ten cents. Now you might have to format that using the key right here under the home button to get the dollar sign. Now how about commission? How much money are we going to give to Charlie Barnes for selling this pool cover? 
Well, here's the rule above. 10% commission for items less than $50. But if he sells an item that sells for more than $50, we'll give him 20% of the profits. So let's go and make a formula using the if command, equals if. My rule says, if this sale price, I'll click here, is greater than $50, comma, then let's give him more than more profit than, than less. So the rule says give him 20% of the sales. Let's make it 20% of the profits actually. So let's say take the profit and multiply a shift in 8 and a decimal 2. So that's 20%. But if it's less than or equal to 50, comma, then let's take the profits and multiply by 0.1 or 10%. So that's the rule that tells us the commission is based on the value of the item that was sold. Press enter. So the commission for this item is 20%. It cost more than $50, so we give him 20% of the profits of the store. So Charlie Barnes earned $8.02, which is 20% of the profit on this item. Now let's just highlight these two squares and fill down. So I'm going to grab the little corner and drag down. Now it's a little bit hard to fill down when you have 172 rows. So here's another way to fill down. I'm going to hold the shift key on my keyboard after selecting the first two rows and then slide to the bottom of the spreadsheet. Now I'm going to hold the shift key, keep holding the shift key, and click at the last area. You notice that the whole zone, or this whole region, is selected. I'm sliding back to the top, and sliding back to the bottom. Now once I have the region selected where I want to fill these items, I'm going to look for a uh, command called Fill Down. If I click on Home, way over on the right you will see an item called Fill. If I click here, I have down, right, up, and left as my options. I want to fill down. If I click here, it automatically fills the entire range. So sometimes that's quicker than trying to fill it down using this little item in the corner. So I'm going to click to unselect the range. Now you can see in some items, such as this one gallon of muriatic acid, it costs the company or costs the customer $7. The profit for the store was $3, and Doug Smith earned 10% on that sale. So less than $50 item, you get less commission. Scroll back to the top. Now the next item that we're going to look at is called Sum If. Sum If allows you to add together a range of items based on a condition. Let me show you something more specific. Let's go to the bottom. And you can see that I have a few formulas here, three different sums. I want to do the sum of all items, the sum of all the items that are valued more than $50, and the sum of items valued at $50 or less. So let's go to the cost here, column F, which is the profit, or that, that is the cost to the customer. The easiest formula is just the sum formula, so I'm going to type equals sum. Now what's the range? I'm going to type the range this time since the cells are so so many. I'm going to type the letter F and 2 and a colon and then the, word, the letter F172. And You can see on the screen that there's a blue rectangle surrounding the range. Close the item with a parenthesis and press enter. So in this year the store sales were $17,110. Now, what my question is, is how many of those items were valued at $50 or more? What is the sum of all those items? The new formula that we use now is called sum if. So type equals sum if. And now let's take a look at what I can put in here. It's called a range and a criteria. So this, the range is once again F2 colon F172. That gives me this, the range of all the sales and the price to the customer. Now a comma. The criteria. I'm going to have to put a quote.
quotation mark and then a greater than 50 and another quotation mark. What that will do is it will sum only the items that are greater than 50. So press enter. You can see that $16,088 is the sum of all items that were costing more than $50. Well let's use the same formula but this time let's choose any items that are valued at 50 or less. So that is equals sum if the range will be the same, F2 colon F172, and a comma. Now this time, I'm going to put in my rule as less than or equal to 50, and a, a quotation and a parentheses. So now I can see that the vast majority of my sales are for items that are $50 or more. Hopefully these two items, these two cells, add up to the entire sum. Okay, let's scroll back to the top and see what other items we have to do. Two items that you do in most database work is with sorting and filtering. So, let's go see how that works. Go to the data tab and right here you see sort and filter. Sorting and filter is exactly how you would think it would work. Let's choose sorting first. What do we want to sort by? We can sort by the first or uh, we can sort by the last name of an employee and click OK. And so now all the items have been rearranged so that the last name is alphabetized. So all the Barnes items come up first and then Hernandez starts at row number thirty five. And so we've sorted by column J basically. You can resort again and this time choose a different item. Let's go back to sorting by the sale location. So if you're looking for all the items that are alphabetized according to column K, you sort by sale location. And so all the Arizona sales are first, and the letter C comes next, New Mexico, and then finally the last items that show up on the list are Utah. So sorting. Let's sort one more time. I want to sort back to the transaction number, which was the original way that the spreadsheet was sorted. So the last item and the first item now are back in order. The next item is filtering. If you want to filter some items to show only certain values, you use the next button, filter. What are we going to filter? As soon as you click that button, all these titles automatically have a little arrow next to them. So what happens if I choose one of them, such as sales location? I can unclick certain items. If I only want to show one state, such as New Mexico, I leave a check mark there and click OK. And so now it looks like my spreadsheet is much shorter. It's only one screen full. All the items have this in common. They have NM in this column K. However, don't be fooled. The other items are still there. They're just hidden. Look at the row numbers. We start with 2, jump to 8, 9, 13, 18. So there's lots of rows that are hidden just because we sorted or we filtered by the sales location. Let's go back and select all of them. Click OK. Try filtering by other columns. Let's filter by, let's say, by the first name. Let's say I only want to see Helen. I'm looking at her sales, and now I see just Helen's results. Yeah, remember the other items are still there. We just want to hide them temporarily. So that's filtering. Sorting and filtering are useful when you're doing analysis on a bunch of data like you have here. The next item that I would like to use is called the pivot tables. Pivot table is a way to summarize a large group of data. So I'm going to select just the data that I'm going to work with here. I'm going to select from cell A and highlight all the way down to the other corner of my spreadsheet. So I'm holding my mouse button down, moving all the way to the bottom to row number 172. It's important that I limit my, my pivot table to only this data. I don't want to include the summary at the bottom, nor do I want to include anything that's over on the right in column M. So after I have selected all items, 
I go to the insert tab and I'm choosing a pivot table. Pivot tables show up next. It says what columns are we going to use? You can see the selection here is from A1 to K172. That's what I've just selected. It's going to create a new worksheet. Up until now we've only used one worksheet. It's always been called Sheet 1 as you can see at the bottom. But when I click OK you will see now I have a new sheet. This one says Sheet 3. Yours probably says Sheet 2. Now what are we going to put in a pivot table? First of all in a pivot table you think of what you're going to add together or make a summary of. Well all I care about now is the sales figures for each of my salespeople. So I'm going to select last name and the sale price of each item. You notice that we have a little summary here. Barnes sold six thousand dollars. When I click those the computer guessed what I wanted to do. It says I'm going to use the rows of the last name and choose the sum of the sales item. There are other ways you can add these together. You can count them, you can average them, put the maximum. Most often you use sum. You can experiment with other items. You can drag these around and get strange results. You can do filtering. There's a lot to do with pivot tables, but for all our purposes today, is I want to leave this as the sum of the values and the row labels as the last name of each employee. Let's format these as dollars figures because that's what they are. And now you can see that the best salesperson in my store is Barnes. Smith comes in a close second. Hernandez needs some help. To show this visually, we can highlight these numbers and create a chart. Let's go to insert. And a, a pie chart would be an appropriate type of sales figure here. So I like three-dimensional pie charts. Let's put this next to the other. And you can see the last name of each salesperson and the percentages of the total sales. You might want to show some data on this graph as well. You can right click this and you can choose add data labels. So you can click here and it will show the actual number of sales that each employee earned. Adjust the colors and the formatting to your style. Now the last thing we should do is print a worksheet. So let's put your name up here and then print this page. When you go to print, make sure that it fits on one sheet. So I choose print. And you can see in the preview that I have two pieces of paper here. It's not really necessary to have two. Let's make this a horizontal landscape and let's condense this to one page and click print.